Hello everybody, this is Joey, and I'm making another video about Ubuntu for you, because I love you all, and I know that that's what you want from me. This is Ubuntu 20.04, which came out today, and uh the the reason that I'm making a video about it is because it's called Focal Fossa or Fossa. Not sure how to pronounce that. But the very first video I made about Ubuntu was I think in 2007. So about 13 years ago. And I don't remember which one point release it was. 7.04, I think. But it was called Feisty Fawn. So we've made it all the way through the alphabet. From Feisty Fawn to Focal Fossa. Um, so here it is. I don't use Ubuntu, uh, as my desktop daily driver anymore. I use Windows 10 as my desktop daily driver. Now, uh, I'm a .NET developer, so that's kind of what we do. But... Uh, that being said, you can put .NET on Linux machines now. So, there are fewer and fewer excuses for me to still be using Windows 10. Uh, but right now, that's one of the excuses I use. The other is Windows 10 is getting pretty good. And it's got Linux built into it, so I can have the best of both worlds. Uh, not really, maybe not fair, to be honest with you, because Windows can include Linux, but Linux can include Windows, so maybe not completely fair. So this is the default desktop for Ubuntu 20.04. Focal Fossa. There's actually two pronunciations for it on the Wikipedia page. Uh, so you'll notice that I'm uh, I'm actually logged in through VNC uh, so that I can record this on my Windows desktop. <laughs> um, uh, it's just it's just easier that way. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about graphics performance or anything like that. What does this do? Does that do something? I don't know. Does this do something? Yes, I know. Clear that. Uh, interesting. Hmm. So let's dive in. You can hear my keyboard clacking here. Sorry about that. Let's dive into the settings. Uh, here's my computer name. And I'm doing screen sharing. And I have SSH enabled. SSH, if you download um, the desktop version, SSH is not installed. Uh, nor is it running. So you have to do that manually you also have to do this manually like uh, you have to install some uh, program for that so um, luckily there's some documentation on how to do that but not for the faint of heart uh, and definitely not for newbies so what all we got here Wi-Fi not using Wi-Fi uh, I bought a, 
I was using Wi-Fi, and then I bought a a switch, and I run a piece of cable under the carpet. <laughs> um, I got kind of a Oriental carpet thing going on in my living room, so I, I ran a. I realized, oh, I could, I could run a network cable under that, because my computer actually lives in the dining room area. I live in a one bedroom apartment and so and it's it's the smallest one in this apartment complex basically and uh there's not a lot of room so my dining room is where I have my battle station and I ran a network cable under the carpet and uh, then it kind of just abruptly ends in a big tangle of wires underneath my desk. And I plugged in a switch. And so now I have uh, a switch down there. And, and I realized today, I was looking at the switch and it had an IP address. And I'm like, oh, what is that? So I, uh, and I just bought this switch like last week and got it hooked up like two or three days ago. Um, so... I was like, what is that? You can log into it. It's a smart, it's it's not, I hesitate to say that it's a managed switch. They call it a smart switch. So anyway, I have a managed switch now, kind of. Uh, so yeah, networking, Bluetooth, background, appearance. So I noticed that they have this. Now we have this, you can do a light theme or super light theme. Um, the only difference between these two that I can see really is that this uh, area up here is dark. And then you have, of course, dark theme, which is the theme that most people prefer, I think. Well, most developers prefer it anyway. And, but then I notice on certain things like this, it's not dark. So... That's a little disappointing. And then if you install a program, uh, the little window that pops up and asks for your, uh, what do you call that? Your password, that one. <laughs> uh, that's also not covered, so. Uh, yeah, here's, here's a bunch of stuff. So a bunch of settings. I mainly came in here to show us this, that you have this ability to change the look of it a little bit, which is nice. Um, I'm actually not a big GNOME desktop fan. It's okay. Uh, but... I'm just not a big fan. Uh, is there anything else interesting in here? It did automatically detect my printer, which was nice. Um, users, that's me. Uh, nothing else so far. Files, this is a fresh install, so there's no uh, embarrassing things in my downloads folder. Uh, most folders are empty, in fact. Anything in the snap folder? Huh. Yeah, so... Now I'm curious. Um, yeah. So... Firefox. I didn't mean to open you, Firefox, but that's okay. So Ubuntu has this thing called the Ubuntu software. Uh, I think they just call it Ubuntu software now. Uh, it, it used to be a store, and they used to sell stuff in it, but I don't know that they still s allow you to sell applications in here or not. I think it's all just free stuff. And um, But they merged this and the Snap thing together the store snap store together so snaps are like um 
I don't really know how to describe a snap. I don't, I haven't really kept up with it. There's basically two competing technologies. There's snap and then there's flat pack. Snap is made by Canonical, which makes Ubuntu. And uh, it's a lot cleaner than flat pack. And it, um, of course, is supported by Canonical. And it seems to have more packages available. But they combined the two together here. And so used to when you would install programs out of Ubuntu software, they would just use the regular apt package manager. But the apt package manager has some rather dated packages in it. And what Snap allows you to do is to get more up-to-date software. Uh, as long as there's a Snap package for it. So this one looks like it is a Snap package, I guess. But it's... I don't let's see channel latest stable. Yeah, I don't I don't know, but th this is um it, this one's clearly a snap package, but it it's it really blurs the line between what is an apt package and what is a snap package. So that's controversial and interesting. Um, this computer, by the way, <coughs> I mainly use it as a uh, um, a server and just to play around with and mess around with. Although this is a a pretty freaking kick-ass server. It's. <laughs> <laughs> to just play around with it's got like a a GTX 1060 uh graphics card in it and an NVMe drive like like a half terabyte MB <laughs> and <laughs> and it's got uh a Ryzen 5 3600X in it so it's quite powerful to be just kind of a toy but I've been processing uh, work units on it for some of those uh, projects where you do that sort of thing. Uh, it's 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 late April, twenty twenty, and so for posterity's sake, I'm obliged to mention that this is during the COVID nineteen virus outbreak 2020 hashtag hashtag and it's um uh, yeah there's not a lot going on right now so <laughs> it's one of the reasons I'm making this video not that I would be doing anything else really worthwhile but uh yeah that's going on right now so just thought I'd bring that up show applications this is a remote des desktop um I could really get something going here if I remote it into my Windows desktop I'd think everything might explode. Uh, I don't know what software updater does. I guess it just does that. That's interesting. Uh, I ins this is uh, like the only thing I've installed on, or these two things here. Remina, Remina, I don't know how to pronounce that. And Tilix or Tilix. I guess it's Tilix because it's a tiling console.
thing. So that's kind of cool. Um, maybe one day I'll use this for some purpose. But uh, the normal the normal terminal the one thing I don't like about the normal is this. There's like this huge chin on it or forehead and uh, this one also has all these programs have this huge forehead this is one of my big beefs with GNOME so out of the box this can go away down here so this is my own fault for having like a a task bar uh, but this uh, this menu up here is virtually worthless like this this bar up here at the top worthless it does nothing um, I don't know what the purpose of it is other than to try to be like a Mac um, and then all GNOME apps have like this giant forehead here which and then and then you have this box and this part right here where my mouse is now is what starts the actual application window so this one actually does something useful and productive I guess um, I feel like there's not a lot of like when you click on this <laughs> it opens a new tab but it's down here so you it doesn't give you tabs up here so there's just this is just a lot of wasted space so uh there's like i would say probably i don't know how many pixels that is but there's probably about 70 pixels maybe 80 pixels here of just at the top of the screen especially if you have something maximized like this just just waste it just waste it up here and then this is wasted down here too although you can move it left or right if you want to or you can hide it you can auto hide this um, but the stuff that's in this bar could easily go in this bar so I don't really know why that is the way it is. And like I don't know what this gives you really. Like you could put a button down here to do that. Uh anyway. Oh gnome. I know I have this is also Linux and I have alternatives, but this is the default install. You would think they would want the default install to look good. Um, and not use up all your screen real estate. Especially this vertical piece. Especially since a lot there's a lot of uh, 16 by 10, 21 by 9, 16 by 9 aspect ratios out there eats up real estate and it does does nothing it tells you the time you can put that down here uh, just because Windows does it doesn't mean it's bad I don't know what this dot 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 means okay trash I don't know what trash is for trash I guess is there anything else interesting going on where does the help button go uh, just some documentation here and of course Firefox comes with Firefox so that you can um, easily install Chrome uh, way better than using Internet Explorer to download Chrome Firefox um, I'm kind of joking there but kind of not uh, there. W uh, I don't want to 
sync Firefox. Oh, there is one. I learned this this past weekend, I think. Uh, or sometime in the past week, I've learned this, but you can go to. I don't know. I just, if you hit F12 on any page, you bring up this thing. Uh, the inspector. How do I break this out into a separate window? Right on. So, uh, this thing compared to Chrome is not that great. Except for this. Like, they're... Um, their uh, tools to like look at um, the various uh, CSS elements are is, is just tremendous so and like it'll even put like like if you screw something up it'd be like this one screwed up it'll give you like a little hint on how to fix it and like it'll a link to the uh, MDN article that tells you what you did wrong. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I've been using this for work. Firefox for work. It's amazing. Um, not, not as my main browser, but just for if I've got trying to figure something out in CSS because CSS is so confusing especially when you're in something like a Angular app and you're trying to override some obscure style you have no idea where it's coming from uh, or how it gets loaded or in what order it gets loaded which is kind of important in style sheets so uh, but yeah, this thing's, it's, if you're a developer and you're working with CSS a lot, this thing's really neat. Uh, you should give it a try. Um, I was going to check and see, uh, which version of Firefox I'm on. This is version 75. That's, that's pretty good. Um, let's see here. Let's do a little testy test. This, this is slow. This, this software thing. What do, what do they call it? Ubuntu software. It's slow. They need to fix that. My internet's not that slow. So you can... In it's weird that you can install this, but it's already installed. Uh, so I don't know exactly... I don't know exactly what's going on with that, but... Um, but yeah, look at this browser window, for example. So Mozilla does nothing with this thing up here. They don't do anything with this. Um, their whole application lives down below this, below this line here. So this is completely wasted space up here, just straight up wasted. And then now you've got this much. Uh, so let's let's maximize it here. Uh, so now you've got probably what looks like 120 pixels of wasted space at the top of the screen, and and you know of course you you lost this down here too. Um, but this is, so this is, I don't know, I, d I don't like that. 
if you were on a smaller screen, for example, I just bought a um, System 76 Lemur Pro, and it's got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen, and by the time I'd be interested to see what it looks like but by the time this thing renders out here uh, the pre you know it's it's gonna basically look like this there's gonna be like this huge and then on this kind of smaller screen that uh, it's kind of hard to relate because we're on the YouTube's here or I plan to post this to YouTube but on a small screen this is a lot of real estate here. This is a lot of real estate on a small screen. Like on my giant, you know, 34 inch monitor, battle station monitor that I have here. Uh, it's not a, as big a deal, but on that small screen, it makes a big difference, so not not a fan of all of this this is this is all completely unnecessary up here not that not that that me complaining about that is going to do anything cuz um oh here's some more ooh power statistics Device unknown. That just doesn't do anything. Anything else? Additional drivers. Live patch. Utilities. Oh, this is a sub menu. It's a calculator in there. NVIDIA X server. So yeah, I, I installed the the latest NVIDIA drivers, and I'm using I guess I'm using Xorg here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Actually, do they? Does NVIDIA ever plan to write drivers? Uh, that will work with Wayland? I don't know. Um, I've done some reading about it. There's some design flaws in Xorg, for sure. Like, some pretty big ones. Um, but, so I'm not sure that Wayland's the way to go either just doesn't have a lot of support right now so if you don't know what Xorg and Wayland are well you probably haven't made it this far into the video did they give me any free music no any pictures no videos no just a bunch of empty folders is all they gave me starred recent other locations. Can I click on this Windows network? No, apparently I can't. Huh. Are there any other goodies? Input method. Cancel. Um, eh, remind me later. I'm not going to look at that. Software and update. Seemingly two things that do almost the same thing here. Oh. 
This is... Interesting. I'm pretty impressed with um, the performance of the VNC here, although it's probably enhanced because I I got everything plugged into my switch now. I was on Wi-Fi before. Wi-Fi is just not cut out for some of this stuff. Okay, cool. All right. Well, this has been fun. It's been 30 minutes of me looking at a blank desktop and clicking on various icons. And I'm about to call it a close. Ooh, till I found this. Oh man, look at this. Emojis. Uh, you can't beat that. Wow, look at all those. That's really cool. Kitty cat stuff. Monkey. Do they have the inappropriate monkey? Uh, we started using Teams. We were using Slack. Uh, at work and now we're using teams and so it's not I haven't figured out how teams does their emojis yet but it's there's a very limited amount of emojis and then they have uh, like they don't have this face palm one They don't have this one lounging in a back of Cheech and Chong's van one. Uh, but they do have this one that's like this monkey thing here. But it's like full body, totally work inappropriate, like hump in the air kind of thing going on. So uh, <laughs> an interesting choice. I guess it's supposed to be dancing, but it it don't look like it's dancing to me. Here we go. Here's all the weird characters. Punctuation. Wow, look at these weird punctuations from all over the world. Arrows, pictures, currencies, math, letters. Look at all these fancy letters. Oh, cool. Maybe I could... Uh, Write a bunch of Esperanto stuff with this. Do they have all the appropriate characters for that? I don't know. Kind of, it kind of just stops down here. Are there no more past I? Kind of weird. Um, here's all the math stuff. Who keeps up with all? Interesting. Anyway, um, my voice is going away, and I'm sure that your patience has been tried. So, I think I'll call this one an good for now. And we will see each other soon. That's all I got. Okay, bye.